differently from common technologies based on filters or gratings, this device is based on a patented Fourier transform approach. In this device, an interferometer with advantages in terms of compactness, robustness and stability is employed and is followed by a camera lens and the CMOS bidimensional detector, which directly acquires the image of the scene in a static approach. In fact, the typical way of operation is to use the camera placed on a tripod. The main features of this device are related to the exceptional spatial and spectral resolution. The spatial resolution is linked to the fact that each and every pixel of the sensor measures the entire color spectrum of each and every point in the scene. So no algorithms are needed to improve the spatial resolution of the measurement. Concerning the spectral resolution, this is related uniquely to the travel range of the interferometer, which can be tuned via software without affecting the throughput of the device, so that case by case you can adjust the spectral resolution to optimize the measurement time and the signal-to-noise ratio. Also, the device does not employ slits nor gratings, thus providing an exceptional throughput of the light and an exceptional sensitivity to the measurement. So now let's get started. For a proper measurement, the camera is mounted on a tripod. It can be placed either in vertical or horizontal position, just depends on the geometry of the measurement. Concerning the illumination, we are now using a couple of 20 watts halogen lamps. And in general, the high sensitivity of the camera enables one to use a low light conditions and illuminations. And this can be very helpful when you have delicate samples and you don't want to damage them or heat them. In this case, as a sample, we have chosen salad leaves. And so we are going to measure the reflectance spectrum. So now everything is ready for the measurement. Okay, so this is the analysis software for analyzing the data that we have just measured. It's called Hira Analysis App. So we can go to File and Load Raw Data, and we can go and select the data that we have just measured. So after a few seconds, the hyperspectral image has been uh, computed. Now we can see the image at 600 nanometers, and here you can select the wavelength where to show the image between 400 nanometers and one micron. We can get, then go to the statistics toolbar here and select RGB projection. So this computes the RGB image of the, of the sample. We can also detach the measurement and maybe zoom in just to show you the exceptional spatial resolution that we can provide. We can plot the image in the absolute this is what we were doing before, and normalized. So this is the normalized image. So this is actually a reflectance one. And in fact, if we now choose a portion on the image, we can see that the spectrum now is in reflectance. So this is the typical reflectance spectrum of a leaf, a green leaf. You can see here the visible part. And this at 650, 680 nanometers, this is the typical absorption feature of the chlorophylls, we can select also another point on another leaf, for example, this one, and you can see also the other spectrum appearing. I grabbed the opportunity to show you another image that I have already acquired. So basically, this is the an image, an hyperspectral image, not of a reflectance signal, but of a fluorescence signal. These leaves were excited and illuminated with a blue LED at 400 nanometers. And basically, we took the hyperspectral image of the fluorescent signal emitted by the chlorophylls. We can also plot a couple of spectra just to show you the high quality of the data. This is the typical emission spectrum of chlorophylls. And we can choose also another area of another the other leaf here. And you can see that the spectra are quite different. So also, it is possible to characterize the leaf and the health of the leaves by looking at the uh, fluorescence signal that they emit. Also, we can select a background spectrum here, which basically is totally flat in the overall region. So with this, I just wanted to show you also the capability of our system to measure low light signals, such as fluorescence in this case. And in general, if you have some further questions or if you want to gather some more information on our systems, please do not hesitate to contact us again.